All right, so in, in this video, I want to go a little bit more into characterization. And I, I, the reason why I, I'm doing it in this order is because this is the order that you don't have to, but you really should, in all the order that I told you, starting with the goal, knowing the end of your story, which then makes you know your desire, which then makes you know your, your, your need, which then makes you know your weaknesses. Notice how I did all that in the last video and how it all flowed together organically. And now we have this very organic story. So hopefully you're still with me. Uh, if you're just watching this video and you haven't watched the other videos, you need to start from the beginning or a lot of this is not going to make sense to you. Okay, so continuing on, I want to go into characterization a little bit more. Um, your main character, our main character is Jack in our story. And I need to know more about Jack besides just his strengths and weaknesses in order to flesh out the character. Now, I, I did make a video on character, but there's so much more to character that we can go into. And some of the main things we want to focus on with character, and I'm going to scroll down here if I get myself some room. And I'll go ahead and type this up. Right, so some of the things that we can give Jack we can also give this to our, our main opponents and to and as many characters as possible um, to f you know flush them out. But you definitely want to give it to your main character, Jack, because he's the driving character. He's the one that people need to know and like. He needs physiological, psychological, and sociological background. And this will help develop the main character. So physiological is physical things about your character. Uh, this is obviously his looks. So, and you don't, you really don't want to say a lot about looks. You really want to lead most of it to the person's imagination. But there are certain things you can say about him that will help characterize him. Maybe he wears a hat all the time. He doesn't like to go anywhere without his hat. And maybe it's because he's self-conscious of his baldness. You never have to actually say that. It's actually good not to say it because it'll help the reader figure it out for himself. And when the reader figures things out, they like it. The reader likes to feel like they're smart. <laughs> but it's true. Uh, the reader likes to feel like they've figured things out. And it, so it's good to, even when you're writing, to think of this and think of ways to make them feel smart. So one way you can do is you can show that Jack always wears his hat. He goes everywhere with it. You can even make a scene where one time he's like, where's my hat? I need my hat. I can't leave without my hat. And he, he makes a big deal about it. Gets mean and everything. Until he finally, he won't leave until he finds his hat. Or, he'll, he, or, or he goes and buys a hat because he needs a hat. And we don't know why yet. And then someone mentions his baldness, like, hey, you're kind of getting thin on the head there, Jack. And Jack kind of rolls his eyes and maybe clenches his fist and flexes his jaw. Now, we never actually said that Jack has a problem with going bald, that he's self-conscious about it. We don't need to say it, right? Because we've showed it through his, through his actions, and that makes the, character feel, I mean, it makes the reader feel like they figured something out. So I like this. I'm actually going to go with that for Jack. Um, Shoot, I might actually end up writing this story. It's, it's actually really cool. I'm, I'm liking what I'm coming up with here. And I had, I had no idea. I knew none of this before I started these videos. I, I made all this up as I just started recording. So this is really coming out good. So using this structure is awesome. I mean, look at I'm already coming up with a really cool story idea. And it's just coming through showing you know, these things I've learned. Anyway, so physiological are our physical traits. Maybe he has a tick. Uh, maybe he twitches his eyebrow when he lies. Uh, just little things like this to help. Maybe he likes, wear, he likes to wear a leather jacket. Um, that, that, that says something about Jack. You know, how you make him dress. Maybe he, he wears a leather jacket and Nike, white Nike tennis shoes. That says something different than if he wears a leather jacket and, I don't know, uh, steel-toed boots or futuristic boots on this planet. Uh, but I want to have a lot of human quality, so uh, maybe Jack likes to, I like the leather jacket, but maybe Jack likes to wear a hoodie all the time. Uh, but no, that doesn't work. So I like the leather jacket and the baseball cap thing. Um, baseball cap or maybe some other kind of hat, but I'm thinking maybe baseball cap. So baseball cap and leather jacket, and maybe he does like to wear tennis shoes or, or some type of, you know, yeah, I mean, tennis shoes doesn't really matter. It's similar to Earth, so. You know, I don't even need to decide on his hair color or any of that. I mean, it's really not important. I can just say he has short hair. I never even have to say the color of his hair, unless it's important to the story or important to the character. But, you know, maybe I can say he has light hair, dark hair. Anyway, so other physiological things you want to say about your character is how he acts. How he walks, maybe, is important. 
Maybe he walks very confidently with his chest out. Maybe he walks with his shoulders slouched because he's depressed and stuff. Um, I'm thinking that maybe the, 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 I can go with either one, actually. He walks very proudly and chest out shows that he's trying to hide the fact that he's hurting inside. That says a lot about Jack. That will make him a different character than if I have him slouched. That means he's kind of admitted defeat. So, you know, little things like that. So that that's your physiological. And thinking of those things really helps me determine my plot. So before I even start plotting, I kind of want to know some of these things because it determines how I'll plot the story. Because whether Jack is hiding hiding his pain or or sh flat out just showing it and, and kind of admitting defeat will really determine how I want to write the scenes. Okay, so the next is psychological. And this is, we already got some of the psychological. He is psychologically hurting. Um, he has this inner pain from his his sister's rape and it's causing him torment inside and he's not coming to grips with it and so he's turned to drugs um, so you know that's some of the psychological we've already got that um, but you can come up with other psychological things another one was his fear of heights um, he's, he's very determined um, let's say another psychological trait is that he uh, has a problem with uh, love and I can add a little side romance to this story where he that that alien woman I mentioned earlier uh, that gives him some information. Maybe he starts, uh, they start a little relationship, you know, and it adds some tension, and then towards the end, you know, they kind of break through that tension, and there's like this promise of maybe Jack will finally overcome his, his issue with love. And, and that's where I'll need to do a lot of backstory in my plotting. So knowing this beforehand will help me before I start plotting. So a little bit more about that. Anyway, so he has a psychological weakness. Another one is um, he just doesn't want to love. He's been hurt too many times. Okay, then sociological. How he, well, it's twofold. Sociological is how he interacts with society. And another one is his background. Like, um, where did he grow up at? What kind of life did he have? Did he grow up with monks? Did he grow up with Catholic parents? and Or some type of, since this is not Earth, maybe some other religion uh, that was very strict, kind of like the Amish or something? Or did he grow up... Um, you know, in the slums, uh, poor, and gang gang life, and hard life, and, um, you know, so his background, where he came from, really determines a lot about your character. So you need to, you need to think about, you know, what, about his background and in, 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 in the society in which he grew up in and how he grew up. Okay, but the other thing you need to know about uh, the sociology is how he now interacts with the society he's in. Maybe he grew up on a farm. Uh, or farming type place, maybe another planet even. Maybe he grew up on Earth on a farm, and now he's on this other planet, which which is a very different. You know, he's in this huge city. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it take place in a bigger city, uh, both the slums and the and the and the you know the city has a slums part, and, it, and the upper upper part of town has like I don't know, very nice and rich. You know, kind of like San Francisco has its slums and its nice parts. Uh, so anyway. I might even model it kind of after San Francisco, like a futuristic San Francisco. So the, the, the point is, though, that he needs to interact with the society in a certain way. So knowing where he came from really helps us understand why he acts the way he acts in the society. So I'm thinking he grew up uh, in the slums somewhere, in a, in a smaller city in the slums, um, but he lived a hard life and he got hurt a lot by, by females, and so he doesn't want to love anymore. Maybe his mother died as well, and so he's just really hurt about all that and just, you know, now his sister's raped and he's just really hurt and doesn't want love but he ends up getting it anyway um, or at least the promise of it you know, the reader knows that, hey, something might happen between them and how, how now how now does he interact with this with this alien society, maybe, maybe he did grow up on Earth and maybe he has kind of a racism against aliens because um, because of his background because he kind of lived with humans and and the place he lived on in Earth really was against alien life forms coming to Earth, and so they made laws saying, you know, we don't want no aliens in our place. So he lived in a town that banned alien life forms, and so he kind of has this rate. I'm making all this up <laughs> as I'm going, so th this this is good stuff. I like this. I, I, I think I'm going to use this for Jack. So he has a problem with uh, with alien life forms. So that determines how he acts in this new society he's in. He's kind of against aliens and you know up yours kind of attitude and doesn't want their help and stuff, but he's kind of forced to deal with that problem by accepting an alien's help. I like this. This is good. So you notice it's all organic. Because I have 
this story structure here because I went through all these things and I started in the, in the way I went with my goal desire because I did all of that everything I'm coming up with is organically fitting into the structure it's all organic none of its artificial and that's why you want to use this structure that's why the structure is so powerful so I really hope this helps people write better novels and better stories okay so um, that, I just wanted to say a little bit more about character development and knowing those three things really helps so, so you know how he deals with society how he acts in society and and that where he came from <laughs>